Lecture 2. Strategy. This lecture overviews the notion of, st of strategy and identifies the close relationship between this and leadership. As identified in the previous lecture, strategy is a Greek term derived from two ideas. The first relates to the concept of stratos, which involves a large population of, indi of individuals, a people, populating expansive land, whether this be permanently as a state or temporarily as an army. Hegi is based in the verb to lead, so strategy literally means leading a large population of individuals, whether this be in terms of the military or community. Strategy involves engagement, a definition of the overall objective and purpose or reason for this objective. The overall plan is determined and deployed by the strategist in relation to the changes that occur regarding the deployment the deployment of this strategy. Strategy, and I quote from Klauswitz, 1993, page 207, must therefore study the engagement in terms of its possible results and the model and psychological forces that largely determine its course. What is strategy? A strategy can be seen from a number of different contexts and there are different strategic approaches. There is a deliberate or planned strategy. For a strategy to be purely deliberate, that is, the outcome clearly, clearly correlating with the objectives. Three factors are required. Precise organisational objectives that are very clear. To be common to the organisation in total, and that collective action would be required such that all followers adhere to the strategy, strategy determined by the leadership. These collective intentions must materialise exactly as intended. In other words, the situation must have been totally predictable or benign and the outcome never in doubt. The evolutionary approach this considers that rational planning is irrelevant because the evolutionary approach considers that rational planning is irrelevant because of, of continual environmental turbulence. The social environment is dynamic and organizational strategies must evolve or suffer extinction. Social turbulence forces choices and successful strategies emerge in response to environmental turbulence. The role of the leaders is to fit strategies as best as possible to the turbulence of social, political and economic environments. A processual approach argues that long-range planning is less relevant than the process by which strategy emerges. Strategy emerges through a combination of organisational influences. Strategy is emergent rather than deliberate, rational and top-down. Overall, the emergent strategy will reflect leaders' perspectives as well as pragmatic compromises between a range of stakeholders. The implications of this approach are that those strategies that are implemented without incorporating organisational stakeholders are likely to be ineffective. Systems approach sees strategy as, a, as, a contingent on, as contingent on social, geographical, political and cultural context. Rather than universal, universal strategy must always be context bound e.g., as noted in the previous lecture, Asian or Middle Eastern strategy will vary from West or European strategies, or a strategy for a com country, company in one country may not be for the same, it's the same, exactly the same for another. Overall, viable strategy will be context-specific and involve resources out of which leaders and followers develop strategies. However, because leadership competencies differ, two organisations with the same physical resources but different leadership will generate different strategies and levels of performance. Such places a premium on the notion of leadership and followership when developing strategy. There is development in, in the form of rational planning strategy towards emergent, incremental and processual. Indeed, strategic decisions are complex and require knowledge of dynamic and diverse contexts. How do strategies take shape? This is a quote from Mintzberg and Malta's 1985, page 257. How do strategies form, how do strategies form in organisations? Research into the question is necessarily shaped by the underlying conception of the term. Since strategy has almost inevitably, inevitably been conceived in terms of what leaders of an organisation plan to do in the future, strategy formation has not surprisingly tended to be treated as an analytical process for establishing long-range goals and action plans for an organisation, that is, as one of formulation followed by implementation. As important as this emphasis may be, 
We would argue that it is seriously limited and that the process needs to be viewed from a wider perspective so that the variety of ways in which strategies actually take place can be considered. There are a variety of ways in which strategy may take shape. For instance, strategy may be seen as a pattern in a stream of decisions. Stream of behaviours may be isolated and strategies identified as patterns of consistencies within these streams. Attention should be paid to exploring leadership plans and what the organisation did or does. The intended and realised strategy such allows a distinction between deliberate strategies or those that are intended and emergent strategies, those that are re re realised despite or in the absence of intentions. Deliberate strategy needs existence of precise intentions in the organisation, strategy common to all actors and collected intentions must be realised exactly as planned. It needs a perfectly predictable environment. This is unlikely to find. It is unlikely to find all three conditions, so unlikely to find a perfect deliberate strategy. However, however some strategies come close in some dimension, if not all. Likewise, purely emergent strategy is difficult to envisage because it is difficult to have action without intention. It is more likely that tendencies of the two extremes rather than perfect forms will be discovered. They provide a continuum on which real-world strategy may fall. Leadership intention and follower intention combine an environment that would be more or less benign, controllable and predictable. It's a question. How do you think strategies are formed? Discuss this with your colleagues. As noted, deliberate and emergent strategies fall along at a continuum. The initial one's closest, but what we will do in this lecture is identify a number of different strategies where the initial will be located closer to a, a, um, a deliberate conceptualization of strategy formation and the latter to emergent. Deliberate or planned, as we just noted in, 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 in the previous slides, originates in formal plans, precise intentions. The, the, these, the, these strategies are formulated by leaders and supported by formal controls. The, the environment is benign, it's controllable, predictable, and strategies are deliberate. On the entrepreneurial level, these originate in a central vision, a vision of a single leader and are adaptable uh, under the pers personal control of the leader and protected in, uh, by a niche in the environment. Strategies are relatively deliberate but can emerge within the entrepreneurial context. The ideological strategies here originate in shared beliefs and collective vision. In this context, strategies may be deliberate or mainly deliberate. Umbrella strategies Strategies originate in constraints. Leadership, is, leadership partially controls and defines strategic boundaries or targets toward which others respond. Perhaps unpredictable environments. They're partly emergent, partly deliberate. So one may consider they are deliberately emergent. Process, as noted above uh, in, in, in the previous lecture, strategy originate in process. Leadership controls the process elements of the strategy and leaves content to others. So again, this is partly emergent and again may be deliberately emergent. Unconnected strategies or strategies originate in cells and are loosely connected with the rest of the organisation and may directly con contradict central common intentions. Strategies in this context are emergent. Um, and whether or not deliberate for actors, so I think I think the strategy should emerge with some deliberation from actors within this context. Consensus strategies or strategies that originate in consensus, mutual adjustments, convergence on patterns, and become pervasive in in, in the absence of central commonality. Strategies here are mainly emergent. And there are imposed strategies. Strategies originate in the environment are dictated by the environmental patterns through bounding environmental choice. Strategies here mostly emergent, although it may be internalised by organisations and made deliberate. The strategic leadership process. At the formulation stage, leadership should assess the external environment and, and undertake an internal audit. Strategy implementation means ensuring the correct allocation of resources, which is facilitated through functional policies, a correct corporate culture, corporate structure, suitable leaders and relevant reward systems. Finally, strategy evaluation needs to be fed back into the system. Strategic leadership is a continuous process and should be evaluated 
continually and should always be prepared for change. Strategy formulation involves a mission and the mission incorporates the reason for the organization's existence. Business does not def is not defined by name or status or but by its mission. A clear mission and purpose allows realistic business objectives. In the strategic formulation process we need to answer basic questions like what business are we in? This sets boundaries, not concrete ends, defines motivation and the gener general direction, image and philosophy of the organization. The strategy should provide self-conception, primary co product or service, the primary consumer. The objectives of the strategy should in include results that the organization wishes to achieve while pursuing the basic mission. It may many identified in financial terms, e.g. return on capital. However, increasingly non-financial objectives are being set, e.g employee welfare or technological advancement. There's a common view that objectives should be measurable, identify whether object, objective, the objective has been achieved, communicable so people know what they are, realistic in relation to the environment that the, the, the organization works within. Some consider that objectives are not helpful unless they are measurable. However, some objectives may not may be important but difficult to quantify. Some co companies may deem to become a leading entity in a particular technology element of their industry, such as difficult to quantify, i.e. internet banking in Europe could be difficult to quant quantify. Overall objectives are vital to organisational success and necessary for effective planning, organising and controlling activity. Determination of strategic objectives is conditioned by various stakeholders in and out of the organisation. Leadership at various levels will influence the nature of the objectives. Top management are particularly important. To form a strategy, companies need to assess the external environment. One way of doing this is through a pest analysis. A pest analysis. This involves political and governmental, economic, sociocultural and technological aspects of the environment. Some people also use a legal, um, a pestle analysis which in incorporates the, the, the legal element of the environment. However, for, for this analysis, the legal element is incorporated within the political and governmental aspect. Political and, gov and governmental, this involves European, national, regional and local government set legal frameworks, e.g. competition policy or public spending priorities and, inter and inter ten internationally the relationship between states. Economic, this involves the rate of growth or phase of the economic cycle, recession or boom effects on demand. Level of unemployment may both affect demand for products and the ability to employ labour. Borders, the political, this borders the political in terms of interference with the economy and setting of interest rates. Socio culture, this concludes the shape, shape, shapes the way people live, work, and consume. For instance, demographic changes and changes in lifestyle and ethical consideration also cons alter consumer spending. The technological. Change in technology can dramatically affect an organization's products and processes. They can create new markets, change cost positions of competitors and make existing products and services obsolete. As noted, PEST is broad, broadly, broad outline the environment in which the firm operates. Sometimes a PESL analysis is used which also takes into consideration the legal environment. Furthermore, an evaluation of the competitive environment involves various forces that shape the industry in which the organization operates. Consequently, we may look at Porter's five forces. This is a text in 1980 um, which, which identified potential entrants, suppliers, buyers, substitutes and industri in industry competitors. Uh, new, new entrants involve uh, the barriers that, that, that may exist to new, new entrants uh, and the extent that these will act as competitors. Um, whether there be a monopoly, a high, bar high barrier to entry, so, 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 so a single supplier exists. Entry barriers include economies of scale, large market share, share producing high volume and having a low run on average cost and potential entrance. Uh, low cost position deters new entra entrance. Bargaining power of bu buyers, the greater the power of buyers, the greater their ability to hold down prices and reduce industry profits. Bargaining power uh, the substitutes, the availability of substitute products will affect demand for the products of a given industry. Competitive rivalry, the extent of rivalry indicated by numerous factors, these include number of competitors and relative sizes, the rate of industry growth, the degree of product differentiation, the height of 
exit, exit barriers. Organisations jockey for position, which takes the form of policy in relation to pricing, promotion, innovation and service, any of which will cause a competitive reaction for other firms in the industry. The greater the degree of retaliation, the greater the competition. External environment analysis should allow the leadership to identify opportunities and threats facing the companies. That is, opportunities that equate with benefits and threats which equate with problems or harms. Conclusions. Strategic leaders should build a realistic vision for the future that builds on the realities of the present. It is normally imperative that followers commit to the vision and are prepared to work for its actualization. Such involves developing a sense of direction or framework of policy by which success may be evaluated. Furthermore, criteria to determine which policy should be pursued are also required. The strategic leader needs to contribute to the development of an appropriate corporate culture and review strategy in relation to the evolution of the environment.